So this Images and Multimedia tab requires a variety of graphical assets. So there's going to be the branding aspect of things, and then screenshots. It says between 3 and 10 PNG or JPEG files with these dimensions. So I'm going to show you then how to capture screenshots from your device. We've talked about this before actually, so this will be a good reminder. If you're going to do this then, even if you don't have your App Store set up, you can still do this. What you want to do is launch your app, launch the latest version of your app. So I'm, I've launched my app on my device and it's connected, so you want to make sure you're connected. And we have a um, an app that comes with our Android Studio for capturing these screenshots. So my app is running, it's plugged into my computer. Let's go to the computer window, the C drive, local disk C. Open the Android Studio, uh, the Android SDK folder, SDK, Android SDK, and then open Tools, not Build Tools, Tools at the bottom. So inside of Tools, we have a variety of tools, and the one we want at the moment is Monitor.bat. So inside your SDK folder, we'll see Monitor.bat. Double click that. It's going to load up something that should be familiar that we looked at here and there. This was this Android monitor application where we could see console output and other things. So this should look familiar. Android device monitor. So here we can look at the console. Remember there's a handout already that you can look at for using this most effectively to filter it and such. We don't need to do any of that. We just need to make sure your device is running and this should work on on a emulated device or real device. What I will say as a caveat, however, about your emulated device is don't create the most basic, simple emulated device that we've been using because notice Amazon is saying we need screenshots starting at 800 by 480. The the virtual device that we've been creating and using is one level screen size lower than that. So if you do what we're about to do with that virtual device and then try to upload those files, it'll reject them. Because that low, lower end Android device that we've been playing with is too low end, the screenshots will be too small. So simply create virtual devices that have at least that dimension, maybe larger, whatever. It may run really slow, but doesn't matter. We just need to capture screenshots. So that's a caveat if you're using a virtual device. I've got a real device plugged in, and it shows up here, the Motorola, etc. So if I click on my device, on the first row here, we have the option for screen capture. If you click screen capture, it shows you this screen, which is not live. If I move, if I do other stuff on my screen here, it doesn't change here automatically until you refresh. So Amazon is asking for three to ten screenshots that are representative of what your app can do, what uh, what thing, what features would would best show off your app. So anything is fine, but let's say I'm going to capture the home screen first. So I'm looking at my home screen, and then I'm going to click at the top, um, at the top center, save. That will ask where to save this. You can save it anywhere, your desktop or on your flash drive for safekeeping. Uh, I will put it on my flash drive. I've got a folder for this class, so I'm going to save it there. You can make <coughs> subfolders for all of these assets, and that would actually be a good idea. So what I'm going to recommend is, I'm going to save this to my flash drive, but in a new folder. 
in a new folder called App Store Assets. I'm going to save the screenshots there. I'm going to save the large and small icon, the display, the horizontal display icon, all of that stuff. I'm going to save that in, in here. So, App Store Assets folder. The Android device monitor wants to save this with that screenshot name. That's fine. So, say save. So, um, for whatever reason, on mine, I would love to show up that map, the get directions, but on mine, my map is not showing up, so uh, I don't want to show a blank screen. If your map does work, get a screenshot of that. I want to show off... Um, the customization, maybe, so... here I'm under the about screen. Oh, I'll actually make it even more impressive. I'll start writing a name here. Like this. So there's going to be a screenshot of this screen with user input. There's a user. I'm going to save that screenshot. I want to show off my add classes feature, but it's going to be even more impressive when it's actually got classes saved. So if you do have some 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 classes saved, that would be better. Alright, so this cuts off on my screen here, but I've already filled in two classes down here. I'm filling in one right now. I'm going to save that screenshot, and then I've got... yes? No, it doesn't seem like we can, because if, we, if you go to the edge, you know I can't, I can't grab that edge. So this is going to depend on the quality of your device, how big it is. So. It's just going to be that big. Now, mine's cutting off here, but I know that it is saving the whole, the whole graphic. See, this is the one I just saved here. So it is saving the whole screen, even though it's cut off on when I preview it. So doing this method does capture completely also like the top uh, the top bars and all of that. You can cut them out if you'd like, but this will work fine. So I've got three so far. It, it asks for three to ten, so that's the minimum at least. You can create more if you'd like. Maybe one more. This is the, uh, remember the, the calendar. There's a tab that opens up on the side to show that off. So this is going to be putting your best foot forward about your app, enticing people with screenshots. Why might I download this, this app? And if you can show the best features of it, that'd be, that'd be very good. So I've got four screenshots. That's fine. You can add more if you'd like, but I'm going to
click done to close this screen and then close my Android device monitor since it takes a lot of resources on my computer. So if you'd like to save a couple more screenshots, you could, but I'm going to finish at that point. All right, so I've got these four screenshots. If I go back to Amazon, then it uh, says add your screenshot. So I can drag and drop, or I can click the button to, to upload. And so I have to do it one at a time. I have to wait for one to upload, and then the next one. Oh, I see here. Fail to upload image. Invalid screenshot size. So my particular device is creating screenshots that are not one of the dimensions that Amazon wants. I should have noticed here. So mine is 540 by 960, and Amazon is saying 5 saying 800 by 480. Okay, so I'm going to have to edit these a little bit in, in Photoshop. We're going to use Photoshop in a moment anyway. But if you did manage to get the appropriate screenshot sizes directly from your device, that's good. Um, I didn't, so I'm going to have to edit them in Photoshop in just a moment. This will give me an opportunity then anyway to, to, to use Photoshop a bit. So let's say maybe you did upload your screenshots. You can click... Um, if you click Save, it'll take you out of this screen, but we haven't finished editing all of this, so we'll have to click Edit. So you can either upload them all and save, or upload them and wait. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now open Photoshop. Go to your Start menu. We've got Photoshop. I believe we can open any version, but I'm going to select Photoshop 64-bit. If you don't have 64-bit, just open whatever Photoshop it has on your computer. In my case, I have to resize these. I don't think everyone has two, so I won't really... I'll just do this quickly. Okay, so if you are kind of like on the same boat as me, here's how I would do it. Uh, I've loaded my image, and then um, the width of my image is uh, 550. So I need to go up to Image Menu, Image Size. So mine's 540 by 960. Um, I'm going to write 480. That leaves me 53 extra pixels. So I'm not going to force it 480 by 800. That's going to squash my picture. It's going to look out of proportion. So my trick will be that I will resize the width because I don't want to lose any of the width. So I'll click OK. Now the width is correct. That was under image, image size. Then I'm going to go to image canvas size to crop those extra pixels. Canvas size. And now my height, let's see, I need to put that 800. That looks like 
that, which is okay. Not really, but... This is at least the dimensions that Amazon is asking for. So, on the one hand, this is uh, putting your best foot forward. On the other hand, this is a test project. So if I really wanted to get that working, I would go in and remove some of those weird details. And then file save. This is not quite a graphics class. If you need some individual help during the break I or during the lab, I can help you. But I'm using Photoshop to fix up these screenshots that I'm surprised that it, that the device didn't output them in the, on the standard dimensions. Okay, so I uh, uploaded my screenshots. I can change the order of these. All right, so screenshots is done. I'm going to work on small icon and large icon. Looking at their hint here, the small icon is 114 pixels square with transparency ping and the large one is 512 ping with transparency so in Photoshop I can show you you don't have to be an artist really to create an interesting icon for your app so I'll show you some some tricks here so you want to open Photoshop let's go to file new And then in Photoshop, we're going to create a brand new document. I will call this 512px. Change these dimensions to pixels. 512. So I'm going to create a brand new empty document in Photoshop. The name doesn't matter, but I'm calling it 512px. What matters is the width and the height. Make sure you've changed the units to pixels, not inches. We don't want a 512-inch graphic. 512 pixels. 72 resolution is fine. Color mode and background is... Oh, okay. Background. We should change that to transparent. Amazon is asking for a transparent graphic. Okay, so Photoshop has a variety of built-in shapes and colors that can help us create something that looks pretty nice. 
and a, a, a variety of styles also they're just hidden because there's just so many features of Photoshop so first of all on if we go to the window menu um, swatches go up to window and then this is alphabetical swatches which just appears here on the side we've got some colors built in not a lot of them but once you look at your swatches tab right here which you can open and close you've got this little triangle for extra options if you click on that options triangle here's a variety of of a uh, color uh, color books color um, collections so if we go look at something like um, no, I'm sorry. Um, we should do it this way instead. Uh, swatches. So ignore all these other ones. Uh, we're going to go to oh, which one is it? Load swatches. No. Um, what's that one? Okay, well, it is going to be choosing these varieties of swatches. Uh, when you choose one, for example, Web Spectrum, it says, would you like to replace your current colors or append? I would say click OK to replace so that it gives you a coherent color scheme with the appropriate colors. So first what I'm showing here is under color swatches we can activate these swatches where these colors are in certain hues and, and saturations and groups together like right here I see a group of colors for example Visibone that's a famous one I get this I'm going to select ANPA colors, whichever one you like is fine, but I'll select ANPA because these are kind of like pastels. I want to work with some pastel colors. So I was under ANPA colors. I have ideas of colors here. Then, well, then I could start to draw my icon and such, but again, maybe I'm not an artist. So Photoshop has a variety of shapes built in. If you look on your menu on the left side, you have all of these drawing tools and such. And you've got this plain little square that is the rectangle tool to draw simple squares and rectangles. But if instead you click and hold, you have a couple of other ones like rounded and ellipse and so forth. And then custom shape tool. So let's try that. Click and hold that little square tool, rectangle tool, to then give you the custom shape tool. And then at the top, you've got the actual shape. So, so far it's got a few built-in shapes, not that many. But here's where there's more hidden stuff. If you click on that little triangle, and then you can say show me animal shapes, light bulb shapes, music shapes, or show me all. So click on that little triangle and then select all, and say OK to replace, and then now it'll give me a lot more shapes. So now here, let's say this is going to be my app icon right here. I can select an icon. I can select a color. So at the top it says I'm going to use that color, that shape, now I can drag to draw the shape and I can start to develop an icon. 
if you click and drag, it might not be in proportion. Like right here, it's too it's too tall. In Photoshop, I can hold the Shift key before I start to draw, and then it'll stay in proportion. See, without the Shift <coughs> key, without the Shift key, I can stretch it unproportionally. With the Shift key, it'll always stay in proportion. So you can draw a shape. Whoops, it got cut off. Well, we've got the Move tool, the very first tool here. And I can move it to make sure it's inside of my inside of my 512 pixels. So I can build I can build um, an icon with these different shapes. So I can start putting shapes together, I have different colors. And then I can go a little crazier. Window menu, styles, and then I can add these different effects. So I don't have to be constrained to the, um, the basic flat colors. Although, um, flat the flat style is in at the moment. If you look at the at the Google, at the official Google apps, they're they're really flat. There's very very subtle gradients. It's all very pastel. If you look at iOS, they've got a flat design. If you look at Windows Phone, they've got a flat design. So this would have been cool a few years ago when things were shiny with gradients and specular highlights and all of that Tron effect stuff, which I love. But now. Um, this might be passe. Number one, it's horrible. But number two, and the style of it is a little passe. Uh, so I'm showing you you can do it, no problem. But this is more of the style nowadays. And of course, adding in like maybe a really subtle, that's not subtle, a really subtle um, drop shadows. And that's not subtle either. But maybe this one. Yeah, that's subtle. Too subtle. Notice there's a little shadow right below. That's kind of the style nowadays of modern. Android. It's called material design. It's just the style of their their icons and such. So there's before, there's after. See, very, very s small difference. Even the styles here have a bunch of styles that are hidden. Are the, is this the extent of it all? No. There's plenty of others hidden inside of that little um, icon there. So we can say. Um, What's this? KS styles. So I have my cat layer selected. I add this style and then I get that. So you can have really interesting icons. And of course, any mistake you make, just like any software, edit, undo. So you have shapes, but also you can uh, incorporate text. You can go to the text or the type tool, so with the little T, then you get a variety of fonts. And to the fonts, you can also add these styles and different colors.
So I'm going to mix together some text and some shapes so I can then add a shape inside of the text. This is kind of a little bit of subtlety of Photoshop, but I can add a text inside of the shape so that it's constrained by the shape, or I can add it so that it fills up the whole shape. So what I'm saying is, um, if I put my mouse with the type tool on a shape, it says that this will be inside of the shape. And again, this is not a graphics class, but if I click on the edge of the, if I put my mouse on the edge of the shape, this icon shows me now that my text will follow the edges of the shape. So if I type in there, it's following the edges there. And then if I click completely outside of the shape, well, I can type something, and then that will, that will be completely outside of the shape. So obviously this can be something that takes you a while to figure out, but I'm going to say this is good enough. It's not really good enough, but I'm going to say this is, uh, for my purposes at this point, uh, this is going to be my 512 pixel sized icon. So what I should do first is, this is my working file. I might want to come back to it later and tweak it, change colors and the size and angles and such. So I've been working with this with this file so far that if the power goes out it's not saved it hasn't been it hasn't been saved as, a, as, as anything yet it's still in memory so maybe I'm not done with it yet but I want to save my working file so here in Photoshop we can click file save as and I'm gonna save this on my flash drive to that um, app store assets folder and it wants to save as whatever you call it .psd, which is good. I want to save the .psd version first. This is my working file. This is the one that if I close this file and open it again, it'll still have all of the, the layers and the editable text and the editable styles and such. It's, it's, I can still work on it. Once I save it to ping or JPEG, it's done. It's flattened. So I can no longer go back and edit the text. I can no longer go back and reposition the text. I can no longer go back and edit the color of the shape or the shape itself. So using a PSD file as our working file is what we want. That way we can come back to it and continue to work with it. So first I'm going to save this PSD version in my App Store folder. It might ask you about compatibility, just click OK. And then I'll go up to File, Save for Web and Devices. And 
and so I'm reminded by Amazon, they've, they want a 512 pixel sized ping with transparency. So, in this safer web screen, we have presets. You want the preset 24, ping 24, because that saves the PNG, the ping with transparency, exactly what Amazon wants. And we can confirm down here, image size 512. So this save for web screen is for, uh, for outputting your final versions of your graphics. The PSD is just a temporary working file. You, don't, you never really publish that. What you publish is a JPEG, a ping, a GIF, etc. So here we need a 24-bit ping with transparency, so then you can click uh, Save at the bottom. And I will also save this on my App Store Assets folder. Name doesn't matter, but I'm saving it as 512px. So back in Amazon, I can then upload that image. Based on that image that I just created, I can downsample to the 114 pixel sized one. So I've got my image up to this point again, and then I can file save for web, ping 24, transparency, and then down here, write 114, tab, and then it's going to shrink it down, downsample it to the 150. 114 pixel sized image that Amazon is asking for. And these graphics that we're creating here are also going to be reused once we get to uh, the Google Play Store. If we choose to pay the $28 to become the Google Play developer, we can reuse these app assets. When I'm saving it here, I do want to rename it or else it's going to replace the 512 pixel sized one. So this is my 112 pixel. Oh, 114, yes. And so then I'll select to upload that one. So the 114 size one will be view, viewable by people on some instances, like maybe they're seeing a preview of all apps available. And then when they actually click to view your app in detail, they would see the 512 pixel sized one. And we've got some optional ones. We're not going to do the Amazon Fire TV screen because our app is not optimized for Fire TV. Promotional image, we'll, we'll do this one. And then we've got video, which of course needs more setup, but this one says I need a 1024 1, by 500 pixel sized image, which is landscape, ping, or JPEG. It doesn't mention transparency, so that would actually be no transparency. Based on this, I'm going to create my, my landscape image, my promotional image. So in Photoshop, I can click Image, Menu, um, Duplicate. So Image Duplicate. What name? I will name this 1024 by, what did it say, 768. Ten twenty four by five hundred. So I'm making a copy of my image, I'm giving it a new name.
Then I'll go to image canvas size. And here's where I'll change it to be within the dimensions it asks. 1024 by 500. So I have now a, a landscape kind of image to work with, and this is a, a promotional image where this is different considerations. So I can put um, my, my graphic over here, I can change it, I can put different text sizes, or that is extra text. point of this is to make sort of like a, an advertisement, uh, like a flyer, or something to catch attention to entice people to download. So again, this is another design project. We might not all be designers, but this is part of the part of the process. It's not just about the code and the algorithms and all of that. There is some aspect of graphics, of the marketing and such. And so if we don't have a lot of ability, with this we might not be able to progress very much and so there are other options here I'm doing it all myself but I could also um, I can make you aware of this which is the how many of you have heard of this website called fiverr.com Two R's. Fiverr.com. Anyone heard of this before? What Fiverr.com is, people provide a service for five dollars. So people will write you a song for five dollars, perform you a song for five dollars, draw you a caricature for five dollars. There's a variety of of, uh, of tasks people will do. Now, what's the quality of this? Well, you're able to to check that out first. So let's say graphic design. I want a logo design. Highly rated. So I will design two awesome logo designs in 48 hours. Five dollars. I will do professional and creative logo design. Five dollars. So then you can look at ratings. 11,000 ratings with five stars. So okay, I don't like that logo, but maybe they can do others. Um, these are the top ones. So everyone's vying for their to sell you what their skills are. Same thing here. I will design two creative logo. I will digitize 
any machine embroidery design for you, that sounds like a copyright violation. <laughs> but five dollars. I don't think they're officially affiliated with the Cardinals. I will design logo modern and clean. Five dollars. So you can go in and um, apparently it takes ten days on average to do that, which is good. They're taking their time. Um, nearly 300 have reviewed, 4.9 stars. He, he or she apparently has 148 in the queue. So a lot of people took them up on their offer. That's why it takes 10 days for, the, for you to get your logo. Because people want to pay $5. Uh, I will give you free high quality of your source ping JPEG format free back support free back support express 24-hour delivery yeah email gets to you instantaneously 100 percent guarantee satisfaction or full refund easy to communicate and friendly designer so you get what you pay for it's five dollars you might be able to do a better result but you might find a diamond in the rough and so there's the ratings and such so uh, this is how they make a little bit extra money there's well, you also want a business card, twenty dollars. You want um, the actual source file, so like the original PSD files or Illustrator files or something, right there. You get it in three days, twenty dollars, and add a tip. So I'm getting at that that Fiverr. It's been around several years now, and um, you can get a variety of services done. Legal consulting for five dollars. I don't know about that, but it's available here. I will write contracts or any agreements. I will create a privacy policy in terms of conditions. Hey, that's what you're looking for, maybe. I will conduct expert legal research and advise you. So. I should stop looking at these because I'm going to keep finding a bunch of weird ones. So anyway, we're doing it ourselves, DIY. And uh, we're making our own graphics. This assumes, of course, you have some graphics software like Photoshop or a bunch of other ones that are out there. And then uh, follow the criteria of Amazon to to know what kind of graphics to upload. And so I'm about to create my promotional image, so let's say this is good here. I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to save for web. This one I will not have transparency, so it will just have a plain white background. So notice I can turn off transparency. pretty good. And then the last optional item is a video. So it gives you these different formats and you can upload up to five videos. 150 megabytes or larger video you have to upload it in a different way. So these are common formats. And these dimensions 720p to 1080p. And so That requires much more effort to, to do, but one, one possibility is something like this. It's not the best video, 
but um, over at we'll play this is some there's a simple um, proof of concept type of video here that I can show you. second video um, any kind of video that you create here that would be interesting which is optional um, you could upload and show off how your app works so what I did on that one was I had uh, I had my device and I had my other phone here I, I put it on a tripod so it was steady and you know I you saw what I did there and then I used uh, video editing software, in this case Windows Movie Maker, you know, to add some text and then the the soundtrack and um, these cuts, you know, there's these jump cuts here and there. So that's uh, with a little bit of effort of of a graph of a video editor. You can do that in Windows Movie Maker, which is free. It's a free download. You can do this in iMovie on the Mac, that's also free, and of course you can get much more complicated with Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, etc. But that's um, it's good enough for this proof of concept. And tangentially, if you're interested on in learning a little bit of video production, tomorrow I'm teaching uh, the last day of the of the social media series of classes that I've been teaching and one of the social networks that I'm talking about is YouTube so tomorrow if you'd like to come to to the class and uh, come for the last day we're gonna be talking about YouTube and doing some of this I'll be showing Windows Movie Maker which translates over to iMovie but talking about conceptually what kind of videos that we can create not just specifically for apps but I'll show you a type uh, variety of types of videos and then actually hands-on with Windows Movie Maker, importing the video, uh, setting in endpoints, and uh, rearranging clips, and adding sound, and all of that stuff. And then uploading to YouTube. So this is uploaded to YouTube. YouTube is a Google property. Android is a Google property. Actually, I mean now an Alphabet property. And so it's all uploaded here and linked. And so if you want to add that optional feature or video, you'll have a little bit of experience on that. So the class is tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. It's not an evening class. So 9.30 a.m. and up in room 209, not down here. So that's the, the YouTube, YouTube lecture. Tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. in 209. I don't have a video to upload, so I won't. But I've added all of these other multimedia assets so I'll save and now look at that I've got all the check marks I filled in everything which is what they're asking for not necessarily correctly I might want to take one final look to see that the description is not misspelled and the privacy policy link is correct and all of that but I'm gonna assume that it is and I can edit it later but I'm going to say at this point, okay, my app is ready. I've gone through all of this time and effort. And I will submit app. It's been submitted. I'm going to get an email um, as a receipt, sort of. And then it'll take a few hours for this to be re reviewed um, by the by the Amazon system itself and maybe people and then eventually I get an email that says your app is available and then it's available for people to download so 
We're not going to see that part just yet unless they do approve this app within the next hour or so. Um, that might be way too soon. So we'll take one more break and then we'll look at some more things relate regarding this aspect of the process. But my app has been submitted. It's under review. Eventually it'll be available and people can download it. It's 8.05. We'll be back in 10 minutes.